Morning everyone, we are back. We've got an interesting dilemma. I am expecting the spring rains in about three to six weeks. We should be getting our spring rains soon. Now before we get those spring rains, we need to get the next stretch of the food forest planted. I want to till this soil. Not going to over till this, we're just going to run it through once to level the ground, mix in a bunch of compost, and get it ready to plant. Once it's leveled and everything, then we'll put the new, uh, we'll put the trees in and we'll mulch the whole area, we'll sheet mulch everything, and that'll be that. But we need to till it once. The ground is just a, it's a mess. So let me show you what we have to do because in order for us to be able to till we need to soften this ground. This clay has been baking in the Jamaican sun and when you put clay in an oven it becomes rock hard. Well that's exactly what's happening here. The ground here is just rock hard. We're if we were to bring the tiller in here and try and till this, the ground, it would just bounce off the ground. It's rock hard, it's in, it would not till. We get enough water here, it'll soften up the ground. Once everything's planted, we'll sheet mulch it, and we'll have the next stretch of food for us. I look at the food for us we planted last year, and I see issues that had we tilled it, we probably wouldn't have. So what I'm trying to do is learn from experience. I see what we did over there. Had we tilled it, it would probably be better off. So we're gonna till it over here. This is what we're talking about. These massive cracks throughout this entire section. This is where we need to plant the next food forest. But we cannot plant, I mean we could. Last year I planted that food forest and it looked just like this. But I really don't want to do that. <clears throat> I plan on planting a cover crop of alfalfa. As soon as we till this all up, I want to put alfalfa in here. I've got a bag of alfalfa, a pretty good sized bag of alfalfa that we could use. So, I want to get the alfalfa in the ground. And if I till this whole area, we can throw alfalfa seed across this and hopefully get some alfalfa growing. But we're not going to get the alfalfa to grow in this the way it is. We really do need to till it up. And this is how we're doing it. I just, this is the only pump I have that'll work. I have considered getting a significantly larger pump. A big gas powered two inch pump that'll really pump a lot of water. That's what I've considered. I might just do that. Because this is just not going to pump enough water. It'll take me all day, and hell, it'll take me all week. I say all day, it'll take me all week. It'll take forever this way. Unfortunately, this is what I have to work with. All right, one of the things I'm gonna start doing is taking compost and having the water flush compost into these cracks. Now, when you put this dump the compost then we just rub that in to the water coming out of the hose and it ends up making this compost tea should actually be really beneficial to this soil when we get in here and till it we're adding a ton of organic matter and more importantly the microbes and the nutrients. This is we're creating and feeding the soil food web, which is critical to healthy growth. Right here is where are you? That right there. 
right there is something I did not know when I moved here. That is a scorpion. And we have far too many of these here. Gotta kill this thing. Not gonna have them. Uh, we're back this afternoon. We, uh, the place I was hoping to get a pump from didn't have one. So, um, I've got a guy looking for one. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not real, uh, I'm not real confident that we're going to find one, but who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. What we're going to do instead, or what we're going to do now, is we're going to set up this, we're going to make this compost pile. I spent the last couple days getting carbon to put into this compost pile, and we've got some. I don't know if it's enough, but it's a good start at least. What we've been doing is using the using the mower, all this this field is covered in grass. And it's it's mostly dried out grass. So this is primarily carbon. Very dry. It's perfect. So we've got this big pile here and that big pile over there. Both of these piles are about well, this pile is about twice the size of the chicken manure pile. And that one's bigger than the chicken manure pile, but not quite twice the size. So we've got about three times, plus the seaweed, probably four times the carbon. It, it may not be enough, but we'll add more when we turn it if we have to. That's a lot of grass. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be enough. <laughs> I'm hoping it's enough, but that that looks like uh, that looks like it's about at least four times as much grass as we have chicken manure. So now we're going to set up the pump so we've got a good water supply. The thing that I have consistently gotten wrong when I make compost is I don't have enough water. Never have it wet enough. So, we're going to set up the pump, we're going to make sure we have a good, good, steady water flow. We're going to wet the hell out of this and make a really good, strong, nice, solid pile here. We've got carbon, nitrogen, carbon, nitrogen. Alright, the chicken manure is overwhelmingly nitrogen. They tell me they use a wood chip base. And then the chickens are on it until it's no good anymore. So there's carbon in here, but it's still heavy nitrogen. The seaweed is kind of a little bit of both. The grass is overwhelmingly carbon. Yes, there's some green, there's some green nitrogen in there too, but that's primarily carbon. So we're gonna get this put together. Mm -hmm. 